guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm very excited to do because as you see, I'm starting with the bare face and it means that I'm gonna be showing you this newly launched reformulated product from Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet powder foundation. I picked up mine from Sephora just a few days ago and this is a brand new item that I have not touched, swatched, or done anything with. So it's going to be a first impression. In today's video, I'm going to do an overview of this powder foundation, show you the application with different tools on my skin. And of course, I'm going to give you the first impression thoughts uh, throughout this video and at the end of this video. And as in all of my videos, you will see timestamps underneath this video to navigate through for your convenience. If you enjoy makeup reviews and especially wear tests of complexion products, whether you're a makeup enthusiast or you are looking for the go-to powder foundation or complexion product for a warmer upcoming season, and especially if you are oily combination skin just like me, this video is right for you. But before we get started, I would like to welcome new visitors and viewers to my channel. Hi, my name is Eve and I love all things beauty. Here on my channel, I love to talk all things beauty, makeup, skincare, hair care, and a time travel and fashion and if you enjoy this video and find it helpful give this video a big thumb up and I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already without further ado let's dive in into this wear tub. I applied my skincare several hours ago when I woke up right now it's 9 45 in the morning when I'm starting uh, filming I'm hoping to wear this foundation for the entire day as many hours as I can pull through and um, we will really put this a baby to the test today so this is a newly launched HD skin matte velvet powder foundation and this is a reformulated product from the previous version. I purchased uh, this Prada foundation with my own money from Sephora. I got mine in the shade 1 and 10, which I also went on Makeup Forever website and used their shade matching tool. And interestingly enough, it matched me to three different shade options. And this one was one of them, which is a neutral undertone. Another two options were different undertones. One was a yellow undertone and another one was rosy. This comes in 32 shades, four shade families and three undertones. Retails for 43 US dollars and 54 Canadian dollars. This powder foundation is made in France and has 12 month shelf life and is also talc free formulation it can be used in a multiple ways it can be buildable coverage foundation the mattifying setting powder touch up powder blurring finishing powder or sculpt and highlight since it comes in many different shade variations the outer packaging is a regular cardboard uh, paper packaging and it has a lot of information in the back this compact is very sturdy and pretty good looking to my opinion it is made out of very thick plastic there's also a sticker with some information in the back to open this compact up you need to push on this little button and then there's a full-size mirror and then the sponge is included and let's talk about the sponge a little bit one side with the name of the brand is more like a sponge feel the other side of the sponge it feels a little bit more like velvety and fuzzy and softer in a way both of the sides and textures of the sponge have a purpose we will talk about it in just a moment once we get to the application so it's 24 hour blurring mattifying and comfort feel medium to full coverage natural matte finish no caking or creasing waterproof and sweat proof silky smooth undetectable texture skin like feel i'm not a stranger to powder foundations i love powder foundations and i tend to reach for them in the hotter seasons more so than in winter and i am very excited about this one on one side of my face I think I'm gonna just apply it with a powder and then my left side of the face I think I'm gonna like prime it a little bit like I normally would use it if I would use a powder foundation so you would also get to see how I would normally wear a powder foundation I try to select the products that are easily accessible and affordable just in case if you also were interested in some of those products and um, so they wouldn't be like breaking the bank let's see what a brand recommends as far as application for sheer coverage use a powder brush for medium use white side of the included 
sponge for the full coverage use the beige side the spongy side with a name on it i'm gonna go ahead and use the fluffy side first which is supposed to give me like medium coverage it does pick up quite a bit of product and there's a tiny bit of fallout here i zoomed you guys in i need you to see this So the shade works so far, I think. This side is supposed to give me medium coverage. So far it feels very soft. I don't wanna really go under my eyes because it is powder and I do have some fine lines under my eyes so that's not gonna go under my eyes. So this is the application. This side, the fluffy velvety side of the sponge versus my natural skin. So you kind of can see the coverage right here. Now, it does look like a medium coverage, but I feel like, which is a true statement for this side of the sponge, I want to build up a little bit higher coverage because I still see all my freckles. I still see a little bit of redness all that good stuff. The thing that I like so far is that I feel like it's smoothing a little bit. It's not making my pores disappear, but I need more coverage. So, so I'm gonna use the other side of the sponge. I get a medium coverage with this fluffy velvety side of the sponge. That was true statement. I definitely got a fuller coverage with the other side that's more spongy. I definitely see my pores. It doesn't feel dry. It feels really comfortable. I detect the scent of the sponge. I should have washed it before. Just FYI. It kind of smells like a, a rubbery something. The product didn't give me full coverage here where I'll have a little bit more redness around my eyebrows. But other than that, like around my nose, everything looks really nice and soft. So on this side of the face, I'm gonna be using the entire shebang. For my primer, I'm gonna be using my Catrice Sensational 10-in-1 Dream Primer. This is the product that is a little bit tinted. It basically has uh, 10 different things in it. And I've spoken about this primer um, in my yearly of 2022 favorites and my monthly favorites because this primer kind of does everything. It's smoothing, it's pore filling, it's a little bit tinting, and it's a little bit highlighting. As you see, it gives me like a little bit glow. It has um, something like a gripping property. So I kind of want to like set it here, like on the edge of my face. So it's an excellent primer overall that I like to use and I'll just put it here close to my hairline as well, just knowing that this product didn't grip here. I'm gonna use my IRL filter concealer in the shade C3 from Makeup Revolution just to brighten up my eye a little bit. This is what I usually would do. I would conceal some of the areas where I know the foundation would not necessarily uh, go as close. When I apply my powder foundations, I really like to use a brush like this. In my opinion, around uh, powder brushes work really well, but they need to be soft and a little bit dense. I really like this one by Beauty Professionals, but this is a high-end brush. My more affordable option is that uh, Real Techniques 201 powder brush that is really nice and soft and a little bit dense. So those are kind of like my two go-to uh, powder um, foundation brushes. So I'm going to be using this one today because it's clean <laughs> so what I like to do is just dip it like this like pat it tap off the excess and I usually start from the bottom of my face and start tapping I don't swipe I usually buff the product in sometimes it takes a little bit of a time to build up the product just depending on how much coverage the product gives you but this is a technique that I'm using. This is my primed side with a concealer and this is unprimed side. This definitely gave me a little bit more glow here because the primer is glowy and this is so much smoother here. I had no issues obviously applying it here because I primed my entire face and I concealed my under eye and here on my nose, so I didn't have to worry about jamming this powder foundation into these like delicate areas where you might have some maybe more discoloration or maybe more fine lines. I love that the coverage is very consistent. I don't have like weird areas where the product wouldn't stick. Um, okay, my camera right now is acting a little bit weird because it's just kind of like going in and out of light. So I apologize for that. 
I am not trying to be overexposed here, but I'm also gonna show you myself in a natural light in just a moment. I just wanted to uh, right away pinpoint the differences between two sides, a prime side and non-prime side. I do love the prime side better. So this is definitely more matte, but not flat. I really like how natural it looks. So far, the statements are correct and I do not feel it on my face. It doesn't feel stiff. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel powdery. So now this portion is important because I try to do it behind the camera, but then I notice something that you guys also need to see. So I try to apply a little bit, like two dots of concealer here on my um, under eye and just like a little bit on the lid because this area didn't have powder on. It didn't play well with the powder, like blending it here. Do you see how much uh, clumping up going on here? And I do not notice any of this nonsense on this side where I applied the concealer first. So definitely this order of application works better than this way. I thought I would chat with you just a little bit while I'm applying some makeup on. It's gonna be a very, very natural makeup day because I do not wanna use any bronzer today because I wanna see if the product will oxidize. So I will be comparing it to my pale self neck. And I also wanted to uh, mentioned something. The reason why I picked this IRL uh, Makeup Revolution concealer is because it is self-setting and it gives me kind of like that medium, slightly bit buildable coverage. So it's not a very heavy product. But it is an important thing to keep in mind that whenever you using complexion products, you do not want to use like a heavy full coverage concealer, something that's like bulletproof, and then your overall complexion is gonna be like see-through, maybe like medium or lighter textures. So you want to somewhat match them in the consistency or like the coverage in that sense. So that way it doesn't look weird. I kind of wanted to explain my reasoning of why I picked uh, these two products for my testing today. And I really thought that initially I was gonna set the side with a setting spray, but now it actually looks so nice and comfortable and non-powdery. So I've made an executive decision to skip on a setting spray. I will see you guys outside for a natural light check-in in just a minute. And I'm standing right Right here in front of the open door i just don't want to go outside it seems like it's raining so i don't want like any water drops fall on my face so this is my non-prime side and this is my prime side you guys look how smooth and even this is i love what the primer did here um nothing on my skin i didn't do any highlighters blushes bronzers none of that what do you guys think what does it look like to you which side do you think looks better to you on camera the shade i think matches me very well i don't want to say that it is like a full bulletproof full coverage but it is definitely like a beautiful high coverage but it doesn't look heavy or feel heavy it just looks very natural on skin to my opinion so so far i think all the claims i am agreeing with however the true test is going to be seeing like how well it will wear on my combo oily skin so i will see you guys in a little bit for my first three four hour check-in 12 30 on a clock so i'm definitely noticing some changes at this point i feel like my natural oils start coming through a little bit so i'm definitely noticing that my oils that are here on the primed face you can see that the light reflects a little bit more on this side here where i primed the skin is a little bit more intact and as far as product wearing out anywhere or oxidizing i don't think it did so I think it looks really nice. The colors still look the same. I made it even touch my face here because my hair is loose like this. So I just don't see anything like wearing off here on sides of my face. So everything looks fine. Um, but what I'm noticing right now is that um, here around my nose, and usually products would crease here. So definitely on this side where it was not primed, I do have like small creasing going on like here and then definitely a little bit less on this side where I primed. However, when it comes to my smile line, I feel like this uh, side is a little bit more pronounced, but I also have a bigger smile line here on this side of my face than here. So that is normal, but I would say that I probably would wanna retouch this 
a little bit just this area to set it one more time because this powder is supposed to be like multi-use product that you should be able to also use it for retouching let me know if it's just me but i really find it difficult to use this type of sponge for retouching it might be okay to use it for initial application but i find it a little bit trickier to use for retouching however this is supposed to be a product that should be easy on the go you have all your tools needed right like you have your mirror you have your sponge so you don't have to carry any additional things so i guess that's a purpose so but anyway me mumbling here let me see how i retouch i think it looks beautiful what do you guys think it looks very smooth. I think I fixed my smile line here and it doesn't look like it's too heavy. It's still there. It didn't completely disappear. I think it retouched beautifully and gave me like the really nice velvety finish and um, like soft matte velvety finish again. So I'm here for my final check-in and my first impression, final thoughts. It is a seven o'clock in the evening. I definitely see shine and I'm pretty sure you can see it too. Like my forehead is pretty shiny. So at this point, I do not really see a difference between this side or this side. This side of my smile line is a little bit more pronounced and then here there's like a very thin line when the product is kind of subtle but it's not terrible i've definitely seen worse everything looks fine it just looks a little bit shiny it does not look like heavy it didn't cake up and just purely for the experimental reasons i would like to see if this is gonna retouch okay at this time of the day there's a lot of times a lot of us have longer work days and nine and a half hours it's not always the longest work days that somebody may have or sometimes people travel for extended period of time so you want to make sure this has a very long wearability you guys i think it retouched nicely i do not think it made anything worse it definitely mattified me and i feel like it didn't accentuate anything more. I wanna call it a day for this wear test. And my first impressions, final thoughts would be powder foundation applies really easily. It does give you the nice coverage that it claims to give you. I think that initially I agreed with all the claims upon the initial applications. I think it pretty much hit every single box in the list. And I also really loved how it retouched. I retouched it twice and even after nine and a half hours, not every product would have retouched well. And I also didn't blot it prior to retouching after this many hours. So this is also a good sign. It doesn't look heavy. It definitely looks more oily, more like it's settled into my skin. I don't think it's necessarily the most smoothing product. However, I do notice some smoothness. And I also noticed that the color didn't oxidize throughout the day. I definitely will be still testing and trying this foundation for the next few weeks. And and you will hear me talk about it most probably in my monthly favorites or fails. This sums up my wear test today. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Let me know if you were thinking to purchase this new powder foundation, if you have it in your wish list, or if you already purchased it. And if you have purchased it, I would like to hear your experience, what your skin type is, what your overall experience was with this foundation, if you're loving it or you're not loving it. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about this new launch. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give this a big thumb up and if you're not yet a subscriber i invite you to do so before you leave today thanks so much for watching and i will see you in my next videos bye